holiday extension right before the playoffs. Who's that coming? Certainly not me. Four years, $135 million. It's funny because when you look at this deal on the surface, there's a lot to be concerned about. Like you gave $135 million to a dude who's averaging 12 points, five rebounds, five assists to a dude who it's going to take you through his year 37, 38 season. Like that's, that's a lot of money uh, for not so much production on the surface. But obviously with Drew Holiday, the beauty of Drew Holiday is that his impact on a game always goes beyond counting numbers. I mean, first of all, there are some nice counting numbers. He's shooting career high 43% from three, but also it's, it's his defense, it's his intangibles, it's his leadership. And that's been such a big reason why the Celtics have, you know, they're obviously always at the top or near the top of the Eastern Conference, but now they've just, they've created such a wide gap between them and everyone else, where they're the only team in the league to win 60 games. They have like a 14 game lead on number two. Um, and Drew Holiday has just been a massive part of that. And so from a Celtics perspective, uh, first of all, it was nice because it, by signing this extension now, it actually saves Boston a bit of money financially. And, but it's still obviously going to, you know, really dig into the luxury tax. They're going to be a high tax paying team. And now obviously as we know with like the second apron stuff, like that's going to be more harsh. Um, but I really like this deal for the Celtics because if we, you know, I'm pretty confident that Holiday is going to continue being a high impact player through the length of this contract and not necessarily averaging 20 points the way he did last year when he was an all-star in Milwaukee, but like improved three point shooting defense is always going to be the same intangibles. You're never going to have to worry about him. He's never going to have, he's never going to cause any off court drama, stuff like that. Like he's as steady as they come and everyone loves him. Great teammate, great locker room guy, all that stuff. So if you assume that stuff is going to be there for the length of the contract, I, I really love this move for Boston. I really love when NBA teams, sports teams in general, when they really try to strike while the iron is hot, because so many times you see owners always try to like cut costs and try and have it both ways where, you know, they want to yeah, like, yeah, they want to win, but they also, they treat their team like a business, right? So like, yeah, they want to win. It's nice, but also like, no, like we can't spend too much because financials, blah, 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 blah. So I really like when teams go for it. It's what I've respected about the Warriors for as long as this run has gone on. Like, like Joe Lake has literally just said like, Hey, we have this window and we're going to try to squeeze the life out of it as much as we can. And I think that's part of the reason why they got that fourth title in 2022. Um, you look at Denver, Denver, same thing. A lot of people had questions about, oh, like they're a small market team. Are they gonna be willing to pay the luxury tax? They do, and then they win the championship. And it's just, it, it, to me, it's just such a basic concept that I feel like gets lost sometimes. But it's like, when you have this opportunity to win a championship or to compete for championships for, you know, and I don't know if I want to say extended period of time, because obviously these windows aren't open for as long as we always think. But like, if you have this window, you should do everything in your power to take advantage of it. That goes for, you know, every single NBA team. I think it goes even doubly for Boston, because if there's any team, if there's any organization city that's title or old bust, it's the Celtics. And so when you have this window of opportunity and you have this team that's like, you know, Look, are they going to win the championship? I don't know. I don't even, I wouldn't even pick them against Denver in the finals. But like, it's, I think when you're building a team, it's not like, you're never going to be able to guarantee a championship with team building. The best you could do is be on the short list of legitimate contenders. And that's what the Celtics have been these last few years. And that's what the Celtics are even more so this year. Like they've just created such a wide gap between them and everyone else in the East. And I think it's, it really is them and Denver as the only two realistic title chances around the league. And so when you do that for yourself, when you put yourself in that position, uh, it's it's incumbent upon you to do everything you can to keep doing that, uh, no matter how much it's gonna cost. Because at the end of the day, like, what else are you playing for? Are you not playing for a championship? And again, doubly for the Celtics and their high standards as an organization. So massive props to the organization for just, for just literally just paying up and doing it, right? Especially when you also consider that Tatum and Brown are really starting to enter their primes right now. Um, and, and Tatum's gonna be up for an extension soon. Brown obviously just signed his. So like you really wanna fortify this core. And, and I give the Celtics a lot of props for doing it, for not trying to, you know, pinch pennies, all that stuff. Cause like at the end of the day, you're trying to win a championship. Again, I don't know if they're going to win a championship, but like Drew Holiday clearly puts them in a better position to compete for a championship as we've seen with the record this year and all the numbers that you have, um, and also his track record uh, in Milwaukee. He's a former champion 
Um, so that's also part of it. But, you know, he clearly gets you closer to that goal of a title. And so to keep him around, to lock in this core, because they also give Porzingis, if you remember, I think a two-year extension over the summer. So to really lock in this core, I think is such a great move for Boston and really sets themselves up to compete for a championship at the highest level for the next three, four, or five years, because that's how long this core is going to be around.